Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So continuing from the last video on retrieving SIC codes from the SEC and getting the major groups and industries for the tickers, I'll show you guys how to create an interactive heat map. So in order for us to get this to work, I need to install D3 heat map. If you're running a newer version of R, you need to get this directly from GitHub, but you need to install dev tools as well. And in this script, I'll be using this function to get stock data directly from my database. So you will need to modify the script to get data from from Yahoo Finance or any other sources. And we start off by creating a function that groups stickers by major group, which is similar to the sector. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I'm gonna read in my sector and industry table that we got last week. So let's take a look at that table. So we have company info and the major group they belong to. So this is the table I'll be working with. So let's make sure this is a data frame. I'm gonna remove all OTC stocks and tickers that don't have any exchanges or don't provide one. I'm gonna get the unique tickers from that list. I'm also gonna get the unique sectors and industries. All right, so now that we have that, in the next function or in the next block, I'll be passing in the major group and I'm gonna group those tickers that match the group I pass in. So that'll subset all the stocks. I'm gonna extract the tickers and then I'll do some calculations. So I'll start off by getting the data from my database. So you will have to modify this line to get data from Yahoo Finance or any other source. And if the number of rows in that table is greater than two, I'm going to get returns for various time frames. And that'll be the five year, one year, year to date, six months, three months, one month, one week, and one day returns. If it's free from any errors, I'll go ahead and return that number. Otherwise, it'll return an NA so that we don't skew our numbers in case there's some sort of error in our data. I'll go ahead and combine those returns as a data frame and modify a couple of column names here. Otherwise, if it's not able to get any data from my database, then it'll return null. And then finally, just return the stats or all the returns. So after we get the data for all the tickers, I'm gonna use our bind list to row bind all the data into one table. And then finally, just return that table. So let's go ahead and minimize this. I'll go ahead and run this. All right, so when that's done running, I'm gonna subset all the major groups within that table, and I'm gonna get the group summary. And essentially, all I'm doing here is I'm making sure all the columns are numeric and I'm gonna get the median return for each of the groups. And I'm gonna extract the number of tickers belonging to that group from my table along with the table name. And I'll go ahead and return that as a data frame. So I'll go ahead and minimize this and run it. All right, so let's take a look at the percentage major group table. So this table includes the ticker and their returns for each time period along with the major group. And in the group summary, it'll group all the major groups together so we have a total of 65 different groups, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop groups that have less than five tickers, and I'll do so by running the following line. You can also pass in the description of the group to get all the tickers these belong to. So if we run view, so it looks like there was only one ticker belonging to this group, but you can pass in all the groups that are available and you'll be able to see all the tickers within that group. All right, so continuing with our script, I'm gonna go ahead and group the one day, one week, and one month returns along with the major group description. And we're gonna create a heat map using those returns. I'm gonna use the major group as row names and I'm gonna multiply all the returns by 100. So it's a little bit easier to read. Now to get the interactive plot, I'm gonna use D3 heat map gadget. I'm gonna pass in my data frame and the heat map colors will be red, yellow, and green. So I'll go ahead and run that line. And if you open up that plot, it'll take you to your browser. So let's take a look at that plot. All right, so this is the heat map, but let's modify a couple of things. If we go to settings, I don't want any dendrograms. And for the axis label angle, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna show a legend. I'm gonna print the values in the cell and scale them. And if we go back to our heat map, here we see the one day, one week, and one month. We see the legend here and the values. If you maximize your browser, it'll be a little bit easier to read and it'll also look nicer, but I'm trying to fit this within that screen recording window, but it's interactive. So here we see that the green bars are positive. So we hover over this bar, we see that coal and mining as a group are up close to 17%. You can also click on the description. It'll highlight that whole row so that it's a little bit easier to read. So that's the return for a month. For a week, it's close to 1%. And for the day, they're up a little bit over 3%. And then you just click out to highlight everything again. You can also interactively check the data and include or exclude selected rows. It'll give you a summary of your table as well. But there you have it, your interactive heat map. 
Again, if you maximize this, it'll look a little bit better. And if you wanna close it, you just press done here and it'll close out this browser and you can work in RStudio again. All right, guys, well, this concludes the video. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.